All right, what's up, everybody? BQ and Ro here with the Impact Lounge, and we're talking Bound for Glory. If you're first time visitor, please hit that subscribe button. So first things first, Bound for Glory is not going to be on the Global Wrestling Network. I know this is something they wanted to do, but the you know the GWN is fairly new, and you know we don't know the ins and outs of what goes on with you know trying to stream the show and stream the pay per view, but. It is not going to be happening. It will be on the Fight app, however. So in the description here, if you click on the link, you can get a $20 coupon for the Fight app. Now, I kind of mispromoted this during Slammiversary. When people click on the link, I thought it was you know a $20 discount immediately off the pay-per-view. That is not quite how it works. Um, if you purchase a pay-per-view or make any kind of purchase, to be honest, on the app, you'll get a $20 uh, rebate basically and you can use that for next month like for one night only or something like that and um, I think that's a really good deal because I think the one night only is coming up are actually going to be kind of cool since they're doing WrestleCade and you know um, other independent promotions so we're not going to get the you know one night only that we're used to and Nordholm had already said that in 2018 he was going to try to make one night only is more engaging and more entertaining for people so click on that link if you're a first time buyer on the fight app a first time downloader uh, you'll get that twenty dollar coupon and you can use it next week for one night only so real cool um, if you have downloaded the fight app before and you've made purchases on it and maybe you uninstalled it and uh, you want to download it well the next link down click on that one that uh that's my affiliate link you'll be able to support the show just by downloading the fight app so if you're a first timer get that coupon if you're not a first timer you might have downloaded the app before made a purchase deleted it and now you got to re-download it again for bound for glory click that link and would be much appreciated so ro and i are getting ready to talk bound for glory here we're going to preview it very quickly with our thoughts and everything uh you know to get out of the way if you've been listening to our impact impact reviews we have not been a big fan of the build the card is a different story. I kind of like the card. I'm looking forward to the pay-per-view, and I think Roe is as well. But the actual build itself, um, since they debuted on Pop, this is the fourth pay-per-view, and it's been by far just the worst build. And, um, you know, there's there's a multitude of reasons why that's the case. Some of it's creative. Some is people leaving the country, the, com the country, the company left and right. But, you know, it is what it is. I think it's going to be a good show. Um, it, it seems to have less bells and whistles that sl than Slammiversary did. They're going to get a little more traditional here with the wrestling and everything. But I think it's going to be good stuff. So, all right, Ro, let's talk your least favorite match <laughs> first. Uh, Team Impact versus Team Triple A. Um, give me your early thoughts on uh, what we can expect and um, who you think will win this thing. Um, as far as what to expect... I like to believe um, they'll probably try to do something different where everyone will get an opportunity to you know, get their shine. Maybe we'll see some uh, side feuds and maybe some tension. Like I could see Team Impact, especially with uh, Storm and EC3, maybe uh, um, restarting their feud. But as far as winning the match, I feel uh, Team Impact will win. They Team Impact and AAA, they've been exchanging wins. So I think... Team Impact gets the big win to blow off this feud of battle of the companies. Yeah, um, this the build up to this was was just really shaky because we never really knew if it was Impact versus AAA per se or just a bunch of people who didn't get along. You know, there's not I don't even remember why they're beefing almost. I mean, that's how just all over the place the build was, and the matches they had in AAA were kind of a mess because. They weren't really following the storyline, so there was, you know, dissension within the teams. Um, well, I guess there's dissension with Team Impact, but there was with tri with uh, Team AAA and everything. So I think the match is going to deliver as far as a good six-man tag match that's, that's well-worked and exciting and the crowd is into it. But um, I think this is, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it kind of furthers the EC3 James Storm storyline a little bit. I don't think this is going to be something where... 
you know, say Team Impact wins and they're just all standing tall at the end, holding each other's hands up and that's it. You know, I, I think it's going to advance something on the Impact side. But I think EC3, Eddie Edwards, and James Storm absolutely will win this thing. I hope that Eddie Edwards uh, appears with this GHC title and that would be really cool. Uh, next one. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, ah, yeah, go at, ahead. At on that real quick yeah i uh, am in agreement with you as far as uh, him showing up with the belt and i hope he's able to look strong too because him being champion they can't have him you know going out there and nobody's saying just totally dominate the match but if they make him look like a joke and he's carrying um the ghc championship it just it just would be a bad look right absolutely agreed uh the red wedding match rosemary versus taya valkyrie so this is probably this one has the potential to really be one of the top couple matches on this whole card. And we get two two knockout matches, which is really cool. Um, I, I think, you know, a couple weeks ago when they announced that Rosemary and Taya were going to have a match on Impact, I was really disappointed uh, because I really wanted the first match, the first matchup to be a Bound for Glory. The Slammiversary last year, the magic that that pay-per-view ha had, that was the one where Drew Galloway and Lashley main evented, is that in the build-up to Slammiversary, no one had a one-on-one -on -one match against each other. No one had a tag team match. Um, they had very creative ways of keeping uh, the opponents away from each other, not not getting their hands on each other. With with this pay-per-view, um, with the majority of these matches, I mean, th these guys have all wrestled in one way, shape, or form, and that's not a, a formula that I, that I particularly care for. But... With all that being said, you know Taya got the victory, and this the um, the fact that they added a stipulation to this, the red wedding, which um, people are assuming it's a first blood match. That's that's pretty interesting. That's pretty exciting. That's kind of you know first of its kind in American wrestling. Um, I don't remember the last time we've had one with males, let alone females. So I think this is going to be really cool. What are you thinking about red wedding, Rosemary versus Taya? Um, I'm looking forward to it. It's probably one of the matches, if not the match, outside of the world title match that I'm looking forward to. Um, I don't get the vibe that it's going to be a, a first blood. Is that what you were alluding to, that you think that this is going to be a first blood? Yeah, but that's that's the rumor that's been on several websites. They haven't really officially said it, and it, it, that would be a pretty risky thing to do with two with two females but that's just been the assumption um it, it has not been confirmed i like the vibe that i'm getting from this match i feel like something with the mist is gonna uh take a part in in this match um as far as my winner i think with the gimmick added i think rosemary gets the win and this feud is uh they continue the feud because i think eventually you know the these uh two knockouts uh, we'll be feuding, you know, for a couple of, uh, more months, and then you know maybe you'll have you know eventually have a number one contender shit match for the Knockouts Championship. But I got Rosemary getting the win. I agree with you. I think Rosemary is going to win. I think she needs to get the win. I've said it a couple times on the podcast leading up to this that I thought Rosemary has just looked extremely weak the last few weeks. Uh, just this whole set of tapings in general. I mean. She took the loss to Taya. I don't think we've seen her win in a while. I think she maybe had a squash match victory. I, I really don't remember. But, you know, she lost to Slammiversary. She's lost to Taya. You know, Taya's got the upper hand on her just about every time, I think. Um, you know, even the couple times where she did a run-in, she ended up on her ass within 30 seconds. So I, I just think um, she's looked a little weak. I think she absolutely needs this, this win. And I think, I think she's going to win. I absolutely do. But this this match right here has a chance to be show stealing, and you, you might be onto something regarding the mist. That's very very possible. But uh, I think it can be a real show stealing match. Um, at at Slam Anniversary, a lot of people were saying that they felt Rosemary versus Sienna had an opportunity to steal the show, and it wasn't that great of a match. Um, this one has the uh, this one has the potential absolutely. Uh, Monsters Ball Abyss versus Grado, this was something that th this the build up to this was very silly. Um, I, I don't, I I really think they could have got away with this match on an episode of Impact. Like this just doesn't seem like a Bound for Glory style match. But it's good to see Grado on the card, and um, 
you know, normally you would see Grado and maybe a Bound for Gold, which is something from this Bound for Glory build, you know, not only would, did we not get the tournament, the, um, you know, the tournament, they always forget what it's called, leading, you know, to be a number one contender, and we didn't get Bound for Gold either. So this is just, you know, they did things a little bit different. This, uh, I guess the only issue I had with this build, um, not the only issue, but it was just really rushed. I mean, they drug out the wedding part um, as far as him trying to be, you know, be a citizen. They drag, drug that out for what felt like weeks. And then the dissension between the two of them, they rushed it really, really fast. So, you know, had they maybe, you know, cut a couple weeks out of the whole wedding thing and all that, added it to the actual build to the match, I think it would have helped quite a bit. And, you know, these guys, I don't know if you caught it last year. They had a one-night-only match, a Monsters Ball match at Abyss 1. Pretty good match. I fully expect Grado to win this thing. Uh, what do you got on this? Yeah, this this match, um, it, I, I've i been kind of going back and forth because the way that it's positioned, you would believe with a Grado being the face, I guess he's the face, and Abyss being the heel, but, you know, I, I mean, well, Grado is somewhat over, I mean, at least from what I've seen. Um, I'm going to have to say Grado just for the uh, simple fact of the stipulate stipulation. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how he gets the win, and especially now that Abyss has uh, James Mitchell at his side. Um, so maybe Grado, you know, has somebody aid him in the win. So maybe we see someone return or debuting um but yeah i i'm gonna have to go with grado i think that's a a big possibility now you say that i think grado will have someone in his corner or something like that i mean it, it only makes sense but in these kind of matches when it seems really really one-sided you know it's someone versus a giant the giant never wins so i, I fully expect grado to win this thing um, i i would imagine his uh citizenship was on the line i think I think uh, they had said that, so I don't know. This has the potential to also be the final deletion match of the show. You know, I'm sure they're going to do that with one of these matches. The the Red Wedding is a possibility. The Monsters Ball is a possibility. And then the uh, Street Fight is another possibility. So we'll, uh, we'll see. But I have a feeling this match may, may over-deliver, but I'm not insanely excited about it six sides of steel tag team match moose and stefan bonner versus lashley and king mo you know for me i like the build at the very beginning or i like the storyline i should say at the very beginning and then i stopped liking it and then the last like three weeks i, I started liking it again i'm excited to see king mo in there wrestling and stefan bonner in there wrestling as well i know that he's been training for a little while and this is the second pay-per-view in a row that Moose Moose is kind of in the high-profile, uh, you know, um, crossover match. And this one obviously is not the same as the uh, you know Danjo Williams where that was all over ESPN and all that. Like this is this is much subdued as far as that goes. But this is something you know Six Sides of Steel. I enjoy Six Sides of Steel matches quite a bit. And uh, this is the one that has a potential to be really bad. Or it could be really, really good. Um, it just depends how well Bonner and King Mo are able to work in there. Moose and Lashley have a lot of chemistry, so um, I always trust them to deliver. But I I will say I'm looking forward to this one, and I think it's going to be pretty good. What do you think about Six Sides of Steel? Yeah, I think it has a potential to be, like you were saying as well, good and bad. Um, the one thing I could say, I'll tell you before I tell you who I think will be coming out the victor. Um, I just hope the one thing I want to see in this match, because all the matchups that we've seen anytime uh, Moose and Lashley is faced off, I don't know for you, but for me, it's, you know, Lashley's always looked at as, as like the big dog, like Moose can't really hang with him. You know, I, I, can't, I, don't, I don't think Moose has ever uh, beat Lashley or had a match with Lashley where Moose actually looked dominant. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, because I, I got Moose and uh, Bonner winning, winning this match. I'm hoping Moose is given the opportunity to really look good and get a decisive victory, you know, the pin all over Lashley. So that's my that's my pick. This is the match where Moose takes the next step. 
you know, Moose cannot afford to lose this. And you're right, he's he's la- wrestled Lashley several times and he's never beat him. And they're always fairly lengthy matches. And for the most part, they end the same exact way. Moose goes for his finisher and catches a spear. I think Moose needs this win. And if I would be really shocked if Lashley and King Mo won because where would the story go? of Lashley go from there you know I I would imagine he's gonna lose and that's gonna possibly be the start of his exit out of wrestling because he did say in an interview in a shoot interview that he will be choosing between the two you know it's not it's not a storyline and uh I have to believe he's probably at this point gonna chase MMA as much as I hate to see that I'm not ready for Lashley to go but Moose just signed a monster extension he needs to take the next step. The match would do nothing for Lashley going forward. Lashley's already been on top forever. Moose does need to get that definitive win over Lashley. So um, I'm going to agree on that one as well. X Division Tag Team Champ, or not the X Division Tag Team, X Division Championship match. This um, match was very much thrown together. Uh, Trevor Lee, the champion, and he's the only heel in this match. Um, but as much as I, I want to say that he will have his cronies ringside versus Desmond Xavier, Matt Seidel, Petey Williams, Sanjay Dutt, and uh, Garza Jr., the, the, the team, the, the company's MVP all of a sudden. So uh, this one right here, obviously, every time you get the X Division stars together, they have an opportunity to really deliver. I'm sure this is going to be the first match of the show. For me, I think Trevor Lee needs to win this thing. He has the most depth behind his character he's doing so much good stuff right now there's a lot they can do with the cult of lee he's got his own catchphrase i mean trevor lee needs to win this thing this has been his best title reign by far um desmond xavier we want to see him hold the title it's probably not time yet matt seidel hasn't been on tv a whole lot pd williams isn't going to be with the company that much longer rumored um he actually doesn't know sanjay plays a backstage role i, I don't see him winning the title again so Either Garza or Trevor Lee is going to win this thing. Trevor Lee would be the smart bet. Like, hey, he's got a lot of momentum. Keep him the champion. Garza would be, we're trying to shove this guy down your throat. Um, let's put the belt on him. So what do you, what are you thinking about the X Division Championship match? Um, I like it. Um, you know, I, I would have preferred a one-on-one. But, you know, to have all these guys on the card. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, as far as my winner... Um, I'm just going to go out on a limb. I got Desmond Xavier. If, if they made that Super X Cup to mean anything, um, I believe he should be, well, he should have been one of the ones next in line to get an uh, X Division title shot. But um, I think he comes out uh, with the championship. And then you can do a Trevor Lee, uh, Desmond Xavier feud, you know, if you if you need to. Um, you know, I have no problem with if Trevor Lee retains, but I do think. Yeah, and I said, you know, spoke about this in the most recent uh, Impact review. Um, it's time to move Trevor Lee up the card a little bit. I think he can mix it up in the mid card, or you know, if you want to try the main event, you know, try him in the main event. But um, I'm going to go with Desmond Xavier. All right, so I'm going to just by a pubic hair go with Trevor Lee, only because I think um, he's just got a lot of momentum, and I think they can build the next feud with this match. So I can see. A Garza or Desmond Xavier getting screwed out of the victory, which would uh, kind of kind of start a feud with uh, Trevor Lee and that individual. So I'm gonna say if that happens, Desmond Xavier is the one who gets screwed, and I could see a really nice feud going on. Impact World Tag Team Championship 5150 Street Fight OVE versus LAX. So. Again, as I said, this this is kind of a candidate for the final deletion style match because it's a street fight. I don't see it just being a normal DQ match. I mean, I see it as something that could potentially be going all over the all over the arena because from a booking standpoint, when you got the Monsters Ball match and the 5150 street fight, there's a lot of similarities with those. And the Red Wedding may have some similarities too. But I think the two matches, the rules are too similar. So to have them both take place in the arena, in the ring, I think would be a huge mistake. So I could see this one really spilling out into um, into the crowd, outside the arena, outside, you know, maybe doing some pre-taped segments. 
Sammy Callahan has obviously been teased. However, all the rumors are not stating that he's slated for Bound for Glory. They, they've talked about that he's stated for the, the um, tapings afterwards. But, I mean, the way they tease it on Impact was that he would be in their corner at Bound for Glory. I've said it a few times that they've got a sister. And uh, they may even have another brother. But I know, I know they got a little crew on the indies and everything. So... This match right here, I think, is going to be... Re I really think it's going to be one of the better matches. I want to see LAX win this thing because I think that, uh, as I've said a few times, I think the company thinks OVE is more over than they are. And obviously, they've they've uh, attached the reins of these guys and said, we want you to be the face, the baby face, face of faces of the tag division, which I think is kind of a mistake, as I've said a couple times Um I think we, we need some more depth behind OVE. But this one, this is a match that we don't know what to expect. I hope El, uh, Diamante gets gets involved. I hope that she's uh, healthy enough to do so. What are your thoughts uh, on the Tag Team Championship match? Um, I think this is going to be another one of the matches that has going to be a candidate of match of the night. Um, I got LAX retaining. Um you know, I might be the minority, but, you know, I've enjoyed OVE's uh, title reign. Um, you mean, was, you mean cool OVE retaining? You said LAX? No, no, no. I'm sorry. I, what I was saying is I got LAX uh, regaining the tag titles. Okay. Yeah, sorry. And, um, you know, I've been a fan of OVE. I like the fact that Impact was willing to try something new, get, you know, putting the titles on, you know, a brand new team, you know, of... of guys that some people might have not heard of maybe they weren't as over as they projected but i think this will help them in the long term because see if you have lax retain we, you still can have these teams feud while they bring in new tag teams that's been the biggest biggest thing like if lax i think if lax was still champions who would they be facing now assuming that they would you know would have ran through ove you know that's what's been plaguing them so i th think lax retains the titles they probably feud with the OVE a little bit more, have a blow-off feud, and hopefully by the end we have another tag team waiting waiting in the works that you know they're able to work with. They really need new tag teams badly. I just I, I don't see why they let Reno Scum go. I mean, they easily could have worked their way into this, and you know Garza Laredo Kid apparently doesn't exist anymore. I don't I don't think they. Uh, are doing anything with the Laredo kid going forward. I mean, they got rid of everyone that's GFW, basically, except for, you know, Garza, which Garva, Garza was in GFW, but he was part of the the uh, initial partnership with Crash, and I think they want to keep that partnership going. So, you know, I think they're, they're going to make him strong. Impact, Impact Knockouts Championship match, Sienna versus Ali versus Gail Kim. I would have been... Much more excited if Taryn Terrell was in this match. I've stated it a few times that it's very difficult to book a triple threat that has one heel and two baby faces. But I still think this match can be very good. I'm. Uh, they just they just said that Braxton Sutter's not expected to be at the tapings. That's something that kind of worries me a little bit because I'm a huge fan of his. That could that could uh, signal bad um, bad for Braxton Sutter, but. My initial, before hearing that today, uh, well, my first prediction was that Taryn Terrell was going to win and drop it to Gale during the tapings. Obviously, she's out of the picture. My second prediction was that Braxton Sutter was going to help Sienna win. Um, if they would have inserted LVN into this match, they could have even had Braxton Sutter help her win and her kind of come back to normal from there. So... That's something I could really, I could, I could really see from a creative standpoint. That would have been really cool. But it stands as a triple threat. Honestly, um, even though the safe money is on Gail Kim winning in Canada, I think Sienna is going to win. And it was something that Impact always does is the next episode they damn near defend all the titles again, and and half of them are rematches from the pay per view. So. I can see Sienna winning this thing and then Gail Kim winning it um, during the tapings, even though it would make more sense for her, her to win live. I just don't see Gail winning. I think Sienna wins. What do you got? I got reverse. I mean, obviously different. One of the 
participants being different. But I have Gail Kim winning only to drop the title to Ali at one of the tapings. I feel like with Gail Kim, um, I don't know how many uh, matches we have of her left because, you know, she's going to be retiring soon. So I would like to believe the company wants to give her that one last big, you know, winning winning moment and then for her to go out you know to help put over someone and who needs it more than Allie I I think if you take the title off of Sienna she'll be fine she's always going to be you know a contender a strong contender but Allie is the one you know had all this momentum I mean you know just kind of just got lost in the shuffle with all the changes so I think if you have Gail Kim win at Bound for Glory and then on the tapings maybe it doesn't necessarily have to be the first episode of the tapings maybe the second and you probably promote it, maybe make it be the main event match where Ali defeats Gail Kim in Canada for the knockouts title. That just, I, I think that's that's money right there. This is something I think the crowd is really going to be behind uh, with Ali and Gail both being Canadian. I think there's going to be this strong baby face, face reaction. I think Sienna's going to get a lot of heat. So I think for that reason, we're, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. At Slammiversary, when Sienna took on Rosemary, the crowd was taken out of it by that boring ass two out of three X division championship match, two out of three falls. By the time it got to a knockouts championship, the crowd was out of it. I think this time around, the uh, crowd is going to be all about this match right here, and I think it could really deliver if they can find a way to book um, to book it properly. And um, Gail Kim has not said this is her last match. She even said on the teleconference that she does not know when her last match will be. So there's been that assumption that this is the last one. She has said otherwise. Main event, Impact Global Championship, Eli Drake versus Johnny Impact. We have talked about this several times that we feel like maybe this match isn't big enough to, uh, to close the show. If you look at the way they booked Impact... Every, I mean, the actual show of Impact, every time Johnny or Eli Drake is in the main event, they they end the show with American's top team or something like that. It's like they're, they're just afraid to really commit to these guys. So the more and more I think about it, I think this is going to become a triple threat with Alberto El Patron. But I do think Eli Drake is going to win this thing. I think there's a possibility, as we've stated before, that the, uh, the Impact Brass tries to turn Adonis against them. But I don't know. This this one, um, I would be very disappointed if Johnny Impact won this thing. But I think Eli Drake's going to win. What do you think on Impact Global Championship? Oh, man. I mean, as much as I'm looking forward to this match, I'm kind of worried about what they might do. Um, I know you're against fantasy booking. But the best case scenario, especially if you're going to have El Patron involved, I'd have, uh, you know, say you, you know, have Adonis try to end interfere and Al Patron comes out and it looks like he's going to help uh, Impact but only for him to attack Impact cause Impact the the match and you know he starts a feud with Impact you know complaining about hey you know this guy you know is trying to take my spot whatever but it keeps him out of the title picture um I got Eli winning but I just wonder is it going to be is he going to look strong in the win because even with the triple threat i mean if it looks if they make him look like he's winning by the skin of his teeth or or um you know a whole bunch of distractions like that's gonna make him look weak he needs that decisive victory you know and this is the perfect opportunity if he goes in there with impact has a you know excellent match and you have mild interference like i was stating if you have the old patron you know trip uh, impact ringside or something of that magnitude then fine but they can't have too much interference because if they do that and, and Eli wins like that then I just kind of just feel there's no, no faith in him they have no faith in him. and if impact wins the, the title man I, I I just don't know man and it, it's nothing against him but it's just I just feel like it's a bad look but yeah I'm going with Drake this, this would have been huge if it was Eli Drake versus James Storm in a main event because you would have had people mostly invested in James Storm getting another run. And then if Eli Drake were able to get that win, the heel heat he would have got for it would have been amazing. Uh, I think that they kind of hot-shotted Johnny Impact into this spot. Kind of would have, you know, comes to the company and the first thing he does is feud with the champion. You know, that's like super TNA. Um, but I think the match itself is going to be really good. I think... It's going to be the best the best worked main event championship match in a little while because they're they're 
you know, they're smaller guys. They're not the Lastly, the Galloway, the EC3. You know, they're smaller guys. Um, so I think it's going to be a lot of fun. What What were you going to say? No, and uh, well, my bad to interrupt, but that was the thing. I kind of felt like with Eli's reign, because we've seen him, he's defended the belt against Saito. Did he defend the championship against uh, Eddie Edwards, or was that just a regular match? I, I, I don't know. Uh, I think they had a tag team match. Damn, you know, I don't remember. I remember there was Eddie and Johnny versus Eli Drake and Adonis. But they had a one-on-one, too, after the gauntlet for gold. I, I want to say, I don't know if he defended it, but the the uh, point that I was trying to make, even if they would even use like an EC3, I think to solidify Eli Drake's reign, it would have been nice for him to get, you know, with someone, you know, former champion, on the roster to get a win over him, that would have he would have been it would have carried more cachet. Because you know, he, here's another thing: after this feud, assuming you know we're assuming Drake wins, who does he feud with next? I don't want to see him feud with El Patron. Like, what, what are what are they gonna do? They don't really have any contenders, you know, waiting in line. And you know, you can't keep going back. You know, all these new signings that we're supposed to be getting. All right, this is who's gonna feud with. He needs to feud with someone who's already established on the roster. And, you know, we keep saying James Storm because I, you know, I think, you know, we both, you know, want to see James Storm get one last title shot. But even in a, even if James Storm wasn't going to win against Drake, I think a feud like, like him feuding with Storm would elevate Eli. Or even if you did, I mean, I know it's Hill versus Hill, but say if he was feuding with Lashley, you know, as much as, you know, as dominant as Lashley is, guys that are already on the roster that have, are established, I think that's what can, uh, help someone's title reign versus you have them, you know, working with guys that, that, you know, brand new to the company. But, yeah. Yeah, so this this is going to be a really important match for Eli Drake, and it would be a huge mistake for Johnny Impact to win. You know, if he wins in the future, that's cool, but this is not the time for it, and I think it would be disappointing. And Impact Wrestling has never been afraid to have a, a heel – leave this you know uh leave standing tall at the end of a pay-per-view you know usually when you watch other companies you know they really want that like baby face to be standing tall like impact's okay with a heel heel doing it but they're definitely not going to go off air with eli drake just holding up the title there's there's going to be something um something going on i don't know what it is but but overall what was that was that i said maybe some new challenger you know comes out comes out to the uh uh comes out to the stage you know we hear some music we never heard before they just come out there they don't say a word they just point and then they motion for like they want the title and then that's how the pay-per-view ends yeah so uh i I think it's going to be a good pay-per-view overall um you know as i've said it less bells and whistles and slammiversary it's more focused on the action i think that's a good thing i think it's going to be good um I don't think the build did it justice. I don't think the card is stacked by any means. Some people have said that. And if you feel that way, that's awesome. I I don't necessarily, but I think it's a good card. I think it's going to be a good show. Got any closing comments on Bound for Glory? Yeah, um, I I think they're going to deliver. I think the talent, anytime they're they're live, I I think they're motivated and they're going to be motivated by you know working in front of a different crowd um my only thing is whatever surprises they have i hope it's to aid the roster that we already have i don't want to see somebody come in and you know they're you know they come in and, and you know they're beating down one of our you know one of our guys i just want i want the guys that we already have on the roster to be able to shine because this is their big show and this is the opportunity to kind of do a, a reset from everything that's transpired and have everyone looking forward to these next set of tapings. Yeah, and I think this set of tapings is going to be amazing. I truly, truly do. So thanks uh, for listening in, folks. Again, check the links in the description if you want that $20 discount and maybe you can watch one night and only for free next month. Click on that link. If you've already messed with the Fight app before, need to reinstall it, please click the link underneath would be much appreciated. Please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for swinging by. We'll talk to you guys after Bound for Glory. Peace.